think uh, I think that th this should be fun and should be interesting. And it gives you perspective because these seven deadly sins, while it's kind of dogma within a particular branch of Catholicism and so on, you'll be able to see how influential they have been in our culture among Protestants, among secularists, just generally in the culture. These are considered sinful because they basically represent, they represent the, um, they present altruism. They present applications of altruism. And we'll see, for Christianity at least, what you'll see here is what altruism really means. And it doesn't mean helping other people. It doesn't mean helping other people. Uh, Riley says, as far as I know, the seven deadly sins are Catholic invention. Yeah, as is all of Christianity is a Catholic invention in some respect, right? All right. Seven deadly sins. Seven deadly sins. Um, uh, kind of a, a variety of different variations of this uh, existed in early Christianity. Originally, there were eight. Uh, they were considered cardinal sins because they led to every other sin possible. They were considered thoughts. Um, they were considered evil thoughts, you know, uh, uh, in, in, in a variety, in, in three different categories. There were eight. But then in 590 AD, Pope Gregory I revised the list. He made it a, a more common list. He integrated it. He integrated some of the previous ones. He added envy onto the list. And Gregory's list has become the standard list of the sins. Thomas Aquinas uh, defended Gregory's list in his Summa Theologica, uh, and he calls them capital sins because they are the head and form of all the others. So every sin starts with one of these. This, these are just like uh, in objectivism, we have cardinal values. These are the cardinal sins, capital sins. Um, the Lutheran Church, the, the, the other Christian denominations, all retain this list, the Anglican, Lutheran, Methodist, have all retained this, and even the evangelical, even the modern evangel evangelist, such as Billy Graham, have explicated uh, the seven deadly sins. So this is this is common Christian dogma. This is not some bizarre one. This is not something out of context. This is not some little cult somewhere. This is common, core, central to Christian belief. These are things to be avoided. These are the roots of all other sin. This is the essence of being a bad human being, being an evil human being. Dante, um, Dante in, um, uh, in his uh, famous uh, poems, right, he, he, he actually defined all these uh, seven sins, seven uh, seven cardinal sins, define them in terms of uh, perverse or corrupt versions of love, which is interesting, right? Interesting. Lust, gluttony, and greed, notice this, are all excessive or disordered love of good things. <laughs> I don't know what an excessive love of good things is. That, that's interesting, right? Excessive love of good things. Wrath, envy, and pride a perverted love directed towards others' harm. And the sole exception is sloth, which is a deficiency of love. So sloth is a deficiency of love. So that's Dante uh, in, uh, in the Divine Comedy. And, um, you know, he places different people committing different of these sins and the different rungs of hell. Remember, these seven deadly sins have deadly consequences because if you commit them, you are eternally in hell. And, you know, these are, these are deadly sins. These are sins that, that uh, lead you to eternal damnation. And you, you could be in different rungs of hell, as Dante describes um, in, uh, in the uh, Divine Comedy. All right, so let's go over these, right? I mean, the, the, the first one, the most fun one, obviously... What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in 
to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.